Now let's try to solve for the answer for the remaining two sections over here. So first of all, we need to find the probability that we will get the first energy state. And the probability for that, so the probability of getting the first energy state corresponds to the constant c1 squared. So c is going to be the constant that you find in your wave function. So we call that for the wave function. It's expressed as something like this. So you have your constant, your nth stationary state, and then your time component. So uh, the probability that you will get the energy level at the nth stationary state is equal to cn squared. So now that we're asking, we're looking for the probabil probability that we will get the first uh, uh, energy state, that the probability will be equal to simply c1 squared. And then we call that in the previous section, we already found that uh, our cn is given by this expression over here. So for n equals to odd numbers. So as you can see, c1 is just equal to 4 times the square root of 6 divided by pi square. And then we square this because of this square over here. And then if you plug this into your calculator, this will be 0 0.9855. So this is simple enough. This is the answer to part c. So going back to part d, now we need to find the expected value of energy. So let's do just that. So finding the expected value, the idea is pretty similar to what we just did. We're going to use these constants over here. So the probability of getting the nth stationary state, uh, the energy and the energy level, is equal to uh, cn squared, right? So the expected value is simply multiplying the probability by the nth uh, energy level. So all we have to do now is to substitute our numbers in, and then once again we call that for the for our constant cn, it only exists for odd numbers. For even numbers, it's just equal to zero. So here I'm just gonna, uh, for the summation, it's only going to go for the odd numbers. So when n is an odd number, we get 4 times the square root of 6 divided by n squared pi squared. And then we square this, and the expression for the energy of the nth stationary state is equal to this expression over here. So immediately you can do some uh, simplifications. So 4, time, 4 times the square root of 6, if you square this, uh, this is just going to be 96. So essentially you have 16 times 6. So divided by n to the power of 4, pi to the power of 4. So I'm just bringing this here to taking away the square. So as you can see, the 2's they cancel out. Uh, 2 of the pi's they cancel out. And then 2 of the n's, uh, the n square they cancel out. So in the end we're left with something like this. So we have 48 times the reduced Planck constant squared divided by pi squared ma squared and then also a 1 over n squared and so you see that we have a bit of a problem over here so now we have all the constants over here so these are straightforward enough but now we have this infinite series and essentially so I'm just gonna uh, write this out explicitly this is gonna, just gonna be 1 plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 5 squared all the way to infinity so the denominator is always an odd number squared and then if you look this up this is actually equal to pi squared over 8 so later on I'm going to tell you a way to, on how to derive this but for the time being just take it for granted that this infinite series here is pi squared over 8 so you're going to have to look this up and then using this uh, result you, you can uh, directly substitute this in and you see that this cancelled out into a 6 and then the pi squared that cancelled out as well and then you get 6 times the reduced Planck constant squared divided by ma squared. So this is the expected value of energy. So this is the answer to part D. Now I'm going to show you a quick way to try to derive this uh, result over here. So uh, it's not exactly a proof that I'm showing you. A proper proof you might be able to use Fourier series to kind of deduce this answer. Uh, for using certain functions you should be able to deduce this. but. Uh, Another way you can demonstrate this answer is that I'm going to use a famous result that was derived by Leonard Euler in the 18th century. And I believe this was called the Basel problem. And essentially it's the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 2. So he proved, uh, Leonard Euler, when he was a young man, he proved that uh, 1 over 
the, the reciprocal of all squares add, uh, added up together is equal to pi squared over 6. So using this result, we can actually deduce what this would be. So as you know, uh, we can the sum of 1 over all reciprocal squares, we can break this up into the even numbers. So this would be 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 4 squared. And then this part would be the odd numbers. So this summation here would be exactly this over here. So this is what we're trying to find. This is what we don't know. And then uh, this, I'm just going to write this out again. So this we know is equal to pi squared over 6. And then notice that for this expression over here, I can take away 4 from the denominator. And then you will end up with something that looks exactly like the original summation. So you see that this is exactly equal to this. So I'm just going to dump everything over to the other side. So we have 3 fourths of this is infinite sum, which is equal to pi squared over 6. And then multiplying, you get pi squared over 8, which is what's remaining on the right-hand side, the summation that we're interested in. So using this uh, result that Leonard Euler derived, uh, we can actually deduce that this infinite series here is equal to pi squared over 8. So this is one way to justify this result if you're interested.